Hi, Miss Covered in Paint here with another episode of Critique Me Not. Here we have another drawing I did when I was uh, probably 12, 13 years old. Um, this is the antagonist of my story that I was writing at the time. My 12 year old 150 space opera story. 150 pages that is. But anyway, um, this is the main antagonist. Her name is uh, Aridani, which is hard for me to say now because I looked up how to spell that name and I had been misreading it this whole time. It's actually spelt like Ariadne. Ariadne? Yeah. But I've been pronouncing it Aridani this whole time and I'm kind of like, wow girl, you didn't spend time even looking up how to read this name. Anyway, I don't know what I'm going to call this girl, but she's got some problems besides her name. Let's go over a few. So here as we get closer you can see that her face, again, it's back in that pizza pizza face stage um, where I don't understand that the top of the head is a cranium and these ears, man. I mean, high five for trying 12 year old me, but like, what are those little hot dogs? Hot dog pizza faces? Potato chip ears? I don't know. But it's definitely, you know, I was trying, they're a little bit too high up on the head, um, but at least I had them next to the eyes. Yeah. Um, next, we're gonna look at more of the anatomy here of uh, whatever her name is, bad chick. And I just, I feel like here she's got some saggy boobs. It, it, it just legs, bell bottoms. I, I feel like her outfit's very Charlie's Angels, 2000s-y. And you know, it was around that time, so who knows? But yeah, and I gave her a gun. What angel needs a gun? You know, I don't know. Apparently what cool chicks have. Um, but yeah, if you haven't guessed already, um, this character was based off of, uh, yes, Underworld. Um, this poster was at the Blockbuster near my house, and every time I'd go to the grocery store, I would see it, and I would be like, oh my gosh, that girl is so awesome. She's so cool. I want to make a bad guy like her. Except she's not a bad guy, she's the main character, and she's a good guy. But I was too young to watch the movie, so I had no idea what it was about. Anyway, unfortunately, um, what is her name? Aridini turned out to be kind of a Mary Sue dark side. Um, she's not related to Life's character at all, but she's pretty much a Mary Sue. She doesn't really have any personality that makes her unique besides that she's evil and she's an angel too, but she just decides she wants to kill everybody. Um, I don't think that's how I'd keep her in the story. Um, I had mentioned in, when I was redrawing all the characters that I would, wouldn't would mind having like one of her friends end up being the bad guy in disguise, but uh, when I was doing this illustration I was thinking more of like what if she was an older figure, um, more mature, more powerful, more knowledgeable, um, whereas life is this young girl you know, trying to figure herself out, figure out the world kind of character, and then the bad guys, you know, obviously smarter and more cunning and more together than she is. So, um, in this drawing, I made uh, Aridini, <laughs> I want to say Ariadne or whatever, um, more mature looking. And it took me a while to figure out a good pose. Um, but yeah, and I was a little lazy, so I wanted to um, just draw the wings. They're not accurate, but. I just was like, they work. Um, here when I was working on her face, it was interesting because I wanted to give her a different face shape than Life. Life has like a longer oval face. Um, and so I gave her more of a, a square face here, but it's so rounded it doesn't give her the villain look. She could be a main character. She also looks a lot like one of my characters, Kim, who you guys don't know, uh, from a different story. So then I was like, no, I need to push her facial features different. So I, I kept trying to give her more of a villainous, more mature grown-up look. Um, I like the idea of having a long coat. Um, it needed some more edges. I looked at the one from Underworld and then kind of came up with my own design uh, based off of a more modern setting. Oh, I think this is the part where my cat like stepped on my keyboard and I lost my scroll and so I had to like figure out how to re-get it back. Yeah, my cat. She, it's winter. It's cold. I mean it's fall, but it, Anyway, she keeps trying to sleep on my keyboard, so while I'm drawing, she just decides to lounge and press all the keys. Great. But here you can go and see that I'm finally going back. I'm like, this face is not working for me, man. 
She's gotta be more evil. So I'm giving her that high cheekbones. I'm giving her more of, a, again, a square face, but I'm gonna try and make her look more evil, villainous. And sharp angles and sharpness uh, make characters seem more sexy, but also more, um, I don't know, edgy, more sinister. So giving her lots of spikes here as I flare out her hair, give her some spiky emo bangs and some fluff in the back there. And then I really like her jaw. I was thinking of um, Olivia Wilde. I really like the actress. I don't really see her as a villain, but I like her face shape, and I, that's definitely what was inspiring me here when I was trying to think of a clever face shape that was unique and different than life's. It's very easy to get stuck drawing the same things. Um, another change I made was her coat comes to this, you know, we got these curves, these sharp points. Um, I gave her <laughs> skinny jeans because that's definitely more of the fashion trend today. And then I put her up on heels so that she just had more power and like, I don't know, lightness to her, um, which can be dangerous. You know, it looks like she would be a fast, swift kind of person. Um, you notice when I colored the hair in, I used the lasso tool to save me some time since I was just using black. And then I'll go in with the brush tool and clean it up so that it doesn't look weird. Um, sometimes I tend to render in all of the black. I forget to use the lasso tool, but it's definitely a nice quick shortcut when you're just filling in the blacks. Um, yeah, and so part of me using a lot of like black on black here with her jacket and her pants is going to be black um, is using the white highlights to show the edge of different uh, facets in the design. So her clothing, if it's overlapping, I try to make sure that there's some white showing so that you at least know where the edge of one plane is and where it begins. Um, so now I'm just going in with the feathers and trying to keep them kind of just organic and feathery looking without pulling up any wing reference. Um, again, keeping them very sharp um, to keep her uh, antagonist feel going. We don't want her to seem like she's... I mean, she could be a main character. I want her to be interesting. Um, I think your villains need to be appealing. Um, if you make them too boring or too soft, you, you lose that part of their character. And I think making a main character, it's really important to have an element of both soft and sharp within the design. But yeah, so here I gave her some heels. Um, I should have looked up shoe reference, and that would have been really helpful, but I was kind of trying to get this done quick for you guys. Um, but yeah, so and then I added a sword, um, because it would make more sense that they fought with swords than guns. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What do angels fight with? But yeah, she, I mean, she's like an angel of death, so she'd go around, like, cutting people up, right? Right? I don't know. Who knows? We'll never know. And, um, just working that blade, freehand in straight lines, you know, it's a struggle. Give it some blood dripping off of it, and you know she's done the deed. And you're like, oh dang, this girl, this angel, she's not to be angel that you want to run into in a dark alley and be like, grant me a wish. Um, but yeah, so Aridini has a, a mirror stone too, which is like the necklace that they have that gives them their magical power thingies. So I had to hint it there, but you don't actually see what it is. But it's supposed to be like the symbol of like a flame or something. I don't remember, but. Yeah, anyway, you can kind of see now the final product and how it's different from the original. So you can see the the difference here as we zoom out of the, the old 12 years ago art. And then, yeah, you can just see a difference in appearance and appeal with just a few minor like design changes. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this was a helpful episode of Miss Covered in Paint, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye!